Welcome back to Bano's Bad Bakes. Today, I will be baking a Biscoff coffee cake. Now, if you've seen my first video where I attempted a coffee cake, I put coffee in it. There wasn't coffee in the recipe. There was coffee in the recipe title. It was, it was a whole thing. Um, but this one actually has coffee in the title, has coffee in the recipe, and I apparently need to serve it with a cup of coffee immediately once I make it. So we can be assured that this one definitely involves a lot of coffee. I have to say that the amount of ingredients, like the sheer length of the list of ingredients, uh, does intimidate me somewhat, but I'm gonna try my best. I need to line two cake tins. Grease and line, I need to do the grease and line. The old grease and line. I don't know, greasing when I'm gonna line it just feels like a waste of butter. And if there's anything in life I disapprove of, it's wasting butter. I have my greasy pan, and now I need to line them. The lazy part of me wants to just do it like that, but I feel like the cake's gonna come out a bit lumpy. And I mean lumpier than it already would be even if I tried my darndest. Maybe, you know what, I'm gonna do one like this, cause I have to make two anyway. I'm gonna do one like this and then do one better and see if the effort is actually worthwhile because that's an important lesson for life. Sometimes effort isn't worth it. Well, I half tried, but I'm bored now and I want to get mixing. <laughs> Do not need these yet, goodbye. It doesn't tell me to sift this time, so I'm definitely not gonna. I mean, it's hard enough to get me to do it when it does tell me to. See, this just proves that sifting is unnecessary because if I had to do it before, why don't I need to do it this time? Hmm? It's, it's a scam. Sifting is a scam. Yes. I meant to mix it with a fork. Intriguing. Yeah, the problem with the, the light brown sugar, or the light brown sugar that I have anyway, is that it comes out lumpy. Maybe that's what the fork is for. But it, it feels like simple stirring is not achieving the de-lumping. Now I need to add two tablespoons of this delicious Lotus Biscoff spread and try not to eat the whole jar before I finish baking, because that, oh. Why do I think that I can do things without looking at them? I mean, the good thing is that even if this cake turns out badly, I should still have some of this to drown my sorrows and my gut with. I need to crumble six of these into the mixture, and now I need to fold it, which I think means I need to be gentle, so I don't. Smoosh. I will resist smooshing for this very short portion of the bake. Huh. What? I have zero willpower. And zero concentration because I've stopped counting and don't remember how many of these biscuits I've already put in. We have now folded and I am ready to pour. Let's uh, give this a try at the half quarter way stage. I don't know. So the best thing I've ever tasted. I haven't got an even caught the droplet of batter. It's all coming up by now. They're not particularly well spread out at the bottom because of the aforementioned laziness, but I'm hoping that with the heat they will spread into a more pleasing shape. <laughs> the cakes are now in the oven, so it's time to make the frosting, icing, delicious, sugary glue that will hold them together. Oh, 
I need to use the food processor again. I love using the food processor. I have an addiction. I even used it the other day for a non-baking related reason. That's just madness. That's okay. Goodbye, mugs. Processy. Yes, that's what I've called it. I've called the food processor Processy. What an original name. A star for effort. They know. Basically, everything goes in there and that's that's like the short form of an entire paragraph like that long. Unnecessary. That was a worrying three seconds. <laughs> now I'm just unnecessarily weighing this bowl. Why don't I just start weighing things for fun? I wonder how heavy my parsley plant is. Ooh, 217 grams. Okay, the cakes have been in for 20 minutes. The recipe says 20 to 30, but seeing as we always err on the side of burn in these bakes, I'm gonna check them now and see if they are cooked. I mean, it's very golden on the top, but still wobbly like a jelly. I think I might lower the temperature or swap them around. I should swap them around, shouldn't I? It doesn't say to do that. Oh God, this is the one on the bottom, which is distinctly lighter in color. So I'm gonna swap them, reduce the temperature for another 10 minutes and hope for the best. <laughs> Okay, it's doing a lot of spattering. It doesn't look good. Oh. Damn it. Oh, I can see my recipe oh so clearly now. Did that look cool? Okay, well, see the top. The top is like silky smooth now, but there's a bottom layer here that I feel like I should probably address. So this one is the top one that was the bottom one and then became the top one. Got an upgrade. Um, so I'm gonna skewer this and see if it's cooked, please. <laughs> I didn't notice this before, but this one actually has, where, where is it? There. This has a, piece of my very crudely folded baking paper baked into the cake. Yum. I'm gonna do a magic trick. Why am I dancing? It makes me more warm. Cause that is science. I'm going to do my magic trick and clean all of this up so I can get my cakes cooling and then get diving, apparently. Um, layering. Ta-da! I love magic. <laughs> Shall we attempt to get these out of their holders? Holders, cake tin. I don't really know how to get it off the paper. Also, this cooling rack is definitely not big enough for both of them, so they're gonna have to fight to the death. See, look. This one is not even meant to be an upside down cake and it's behaving better than the actual upside down cake when I put it upside down. I mean, when I put that regular way round cake upside down, it behaved better than the upside down cake when I tried to put the upside down cake upside down. This second one is definitely not all one piece. Okay, let's shuffle this over a little bit. Let's get rid of these pieces of bun. I'm gonna try and slide with this one. Just slide it off the paper. Slide it off the paper like that. Okay, that's not going anywhere. Um, I don't know any other way other than actually flipping it like I did the other one. Is a little bit stuck to the paper. It could be worse. It could be so much worse. We've all seen it. I'm now going to let them cool and then we are going to sand 
sandwich them together. I am now going to transfer these into the cake box. What a joy it is to bake. Yeah, the edge of that one is not looking happy. I mean, the edge of that one isn't looking happy either. Let's ignore the edges and focus on what's inside. Now, it says that I should cut the flat, the rounded top. Oh, oh, oh no, oh God. I really thought that one was okay. What I was going to say was the recipe says to cut the rounded top off the base layer. What is the what is the actual point? Just uh, put that back over here. Not the floor. The floor is cake now. You know that game, the floor is lava. Well, in this house, the floor is cake. So that's my base layer. Let's just get a little bit going in the middle. Okay. Oh, this is quite fun. I don't know if it's gonna help, but it's fun. Better than new. Now I need to put a full icing layer on top of that. I'm pretty sure it's meant to be more solid than it is. I don't know why I still have optimism in my soul. Then I'm just gonna, I'll be over here. Okay, I've sort of been able to cover over my failings. If only it were this easy in real life. So the one that, well, you know, was the safe one. That's why I picked it up. This one was already falling apart before. So this transfer is going to be precarious. You know what, I think I can do a flippity flip. I think, see if I just, yeah. I am going to entomb it in icing. Oh, it loves coming out of the cake box. I don't really know how to stop that. I'm just, I'm gonna let it tire itself out and then deal with it. Like a toddler. So the last, the piece de resistance is to put some more Lotus Biscoff, Biscoff, bits, Biscuits. Lotus Biscoff Biscuits on top and apparently they should be crumbled in the size of breadcrumbs but at this point I'm going to do whatever the hell I want because I feel sad. <laughs> that looks nice. Well, as nice as it can look for this channel. Oh, and now I have to prepare my coffee because the recipe stated I must have coffee with my Lotus Biscoff coffee cake volcano disaster. Official scientific name for what's happened. <coughs> yes, I made the coffee too soon so now I'm microwaving it because this experience couldn't get any more refined. <laughs> My feet are sticking to the floor, ew. The biscuits are attempting to slide off the cake, so let's try and eat some before that happens. Okay, well, it's, oh, well. I was going to say it's a triangle and that bit fell off. The icing, I don't, I need to like, it's separated. It is not smooth. Let's give it a whirl. Oh, well. It, do it doesn't stick my fork. I should have gotten a spoon. I should have known better. You know what? I ain't gonna lie to you, it tastes damn good. Even though there's, there's that in the cake batter. And I don't think that was the icing that I tried to paper the cracks with. Um, so there's some textural issues, I will say. 
But luckily, there's enough sugar and it doesn't matter. Well, based on looks, it's so bad, it's just sad on so many heartbreaking levels. But on taste, no, this is not my phone balanced on an apple. Battery situation. Anyway, I think I'm going to enjoy my coffee, enjoy my cake mush, and say thank you for joining me for another Bano's Bad Bakes. Please do join me again next time, if only to feel better about yourselves.